Hi, folks. Uh, welcome back to another Edgy Conversation. Really excited today. We get to hear from uh, Stéphane Vermette, who is the minister at uh, Église Saint Clair and is doing some phenomenal work in uh, online ministry spaces uh, and has been for some time. Uh, so I, I will hand it straight over uh, to Stéphane to tell us a bit about the work you're doing. What is your ministry? What's your project been? Hello, everyone. Uh, Idlis saint Clair is a brand new congregation that started uh, four weeks after the lockdown from the pandemic in 2020. And it started, the, the idea was to start a brand new community of faith from scratch. And it was to reach out people who were not able to go to church because everything was locked down, but also as a way to respond to all of those who don't have a United Church community in French or in English in their area. And since we were seeing a lot of people to connect through Zoom, Facebook, uh, and, and so on, we said, why not trying to start something? And the challenge was uh, quite something because at the beginning there was me, me and oh me. So it was really starting from scratch, but we tried, we jump, and uh, two and a half years later, we're still here. Wow. I had no idea that you had started this four weeks into the pandemic. Uh, that's uh, an incredible uh, like leap of faith, I think. Uh, to have gone there. Um, what's been unexpected or what's been surprising? It's been two and a half years now, uh, about since you started, probably. There was an hunch that there were people, I would say, out there at the fringe of the church looking for a safe space to talk about faith and spirituality. But until you try to reach out to those individuals, you don't know how many they are. And of course, at the beginning, everything was locked down. So we were one, we were another church that offered worship service online. Yet we made the choice to not to be um a church online, but an online church. We were not recording a traditional worship service, but trying to understand that these days people go on social media and expect some interaction. So try to build a worship experience based on interaction, based on conversation with people. For example, we read the scripture meaning uh, the scripture a reading for the day, and then we open the microphone to everyone for 15 minutes, and what do you think? Does it speak to you? Does not speak to you? You like it? You don't like it? And we share, and then I bring my reflection that is just another one of those reflections. And that's the feedback I receive a lot, said, here we can say whatever we want, and our opinions are important. And it's not, some people say, I don't have a PhD in theology, but my life experience is as valuable. So we learn from one another. So we, we try to use that kind of culture of social media and bring it back to a context of a community of faith. Wow. And I think what what's really standing out for me and I is this distinction of you you really decided to be an online church, not just a church doing online worship services. How did you come to that decision that that was how you were going to kind of direct things? A few readings. <laughs> also trying to understand the medium. It was um John Bell. I had the privilege to hear John Bell. And he was saying, it was simple. You cannot preach against your building, saying that the way your sanctuary is shaped will inform or have a, sorry, I'm looking for my words in English because that's my second language, but it has an impact on what you will preach, how worship will be organized. And then you have this reflection and said, okay, 
we're going to do this from my basement. <laughs> That's literally my basement. And we will see each other on Zoom, which is different because I'm not the minister in the front and people. I'm just one of the squares of many others of the same side. So, and we will all see each other, not the back of our head, but through our own eyes. So, okay, the context changed, the, the, the vehicle changed. We cannot, in my mind, us, we cannot just reproduce what is happening, which is great. But for me, that was an opportunity to explore something else. I'm not saying that this model is better, but there was the assumption of a one size fit all, one minister, one building, one worship service. And here said, what if worship could be different, interactive? Some people can speak, some people can listen, and we're learning from one another not just the minister teaching. So it opens a lot of possibilities, a lot of exploration. And so many times I, I listening to people when they're talking about the scripture passage, for example, I said, man, that's good. I wish I had that idea for my sermon. <laughs> but it, it opened up the understanding of what we can think. And it, there's a great resources in our pews or in our midst, why are we not harvesting it a little more? Yeah, this is such a phenomenal question. Like, why aren't we harvesting the knowledge, the collective care, the wisdom that is in all of our communities? And I the think like, oh yeah, go ahead. No, the experience, the life experience, uh, all those things that people have maybe gathered at work but they can make this comparison said, oh, you're saying this, but as a nurse, I have to, I encounter this and I can draw parallels said, wow. Yeah. And it's like, I think you've really shifted the power dynamic. Like this sense to me, you saying like, you are just another one of the squares in the Zoom box. This like sense that everyone's life experience, everyone's thinking about their theology or the scripture is equally valid in your space. Some people use the expression, um, the chef in front of an orchestra. Most, the, the most important part of the worship service is to say, okay, that's your turn to talk, and then it will be your turn to talk. And so, yes, this power dynamic, of course, have this baggage, have this training, this call, but it does not necessarily makes me smarter than someone who has been attending church for, I don't know, 50 years, or, or people who might not have gone to church, but still has this faith, still has the spirituality, it cannot find a place to explore it, to live it, to talk about it. Wow. That's so beautiful. The way that you've approached this and, and the way that you're shifting, certainly my thinking, but I think lots of people's thinking about what it means to be in a spiritual community and what it means to share space in this way. I know you said like, this is, you have your own call, your own journey. How has this been part of, you know, your experience of your own faith or part of your own journey around faith? I did not see that one coming <laughs> in my ministry. <laughs> Sometimes I'm joking. I was talking about those people who are starting, you know, new churches. And then I became one of those people. <laughs> that was a curveball that was sent in my life. I had the willingness or the craziness to say yes to this proposal. And it makes me think about what is the church of God? How do we live it? What's our mission? Because sometimes I draw a parallel with the story of Pentecost. The disciple received the spirit. They have this great experience. And what do you do after? They go on the public 
space where people were. They, they're not opening the door and said, come on in. No, they go outside. And then I read that on average, people spend about four hours a day on one of these. Are we where the people are? Or we try to pull them inside. And for me, it changed this notion of mission. It says of, no, we need, we need to reclaim that part of being where the people are to bring a positive message, an inclusive message, showing that, yes, church can be that way too. It's not necessarily what you see on TV. There's something else that can be done. It can be done on TikTok and can be done on Instagram, on YouTube, on podcasts. So many ways we can be the church of God. We can bring this message of the good news to people who are just curious. Yeah. And, you know, like this is, I think this is really relevant for the time that the United Church finds itself in because I've heard from lots of folks that like this is where young people are and there are other denominations who are on Facebook on TikTok on Instagram doing work and sharing their their theology uh so this question of like can we also step into that role and step into that space uh as part of who we are I think Personally, I think we don't have the choice. I heard uh, someone in the conference saying, you know, the rise of televangelists on TV on the 60s, 70s, 80s, it's mostly more evangelical uh, minister, and they suffocate all the oxygen for mainline church. And then there's a new revolution here with social media, all those, those ways of communicating with people. And... Other churches are already there and they're effective. And the question about the United Church said, are we going to miss the boat once again for the next 30 years and then complaining that young people are not interested and don't know or we invest? I understand it's not for everyone, but we have a lot of people with great ideas. And these days, it's fairly simple to do digital ministry. You need a phone. Everybody, almost everybody has a phone. Cameras are great, sounds are great. Sometimes it's just the guts that needs to take that leap of faith, not knowing what will happen, N accepting that you might lose control. Or uh, coming back to power dynamics, said, we have this idea that the sermon or the congregation has a control message, and that's the right way. Instead of saying there's many different ways that relevant, relevant for different people according to their own context. So what would happen if we accept to say, yeah, I'm not going to be in control. I'm not going to be the person that will say, that's the way to follow Jesus. That's the way to answering God's call. No, let me help you to find your ways to answer God's call. I mean, I'm really excited because I think you are at the forefront of something here. Um, like you are really kind of leading, leading the way about what it means to be responsive, what it means to be in the world. Uh, doing in, the your same, in the same time, when you look at Paul's he was using the technology of his time to reach out to communities and try to find ways and helping people to solve their problems. So the means change, but I think the, the same philosophy, the same attitude is beyond it. It's just, we, I believe we're such in the narrative of decline and death of the church that we struggle to say, no, it's time. Yes, it's time to take care of those who are within us. And there's a time, there's also a time to reach out. Mm -hmm. There's a need for what I would call palliative care for some ministries. Mm -hmm. And there's a call for being midwives of new ministries. Yeah. Wow. 
So what, what does that mean for you next? Where do you go from here with the work that you've done already? There's a lot of question that I've been asking myself and, and tried to bring because at the beginning, the understanding is we will create a, um, a congregation online. And then the more I'm in it, maybe what we need, it's a digital ministry. Maybe the, the difference is in the details, but the question of membership, who's our members? In a congregation, that's fairly easy. But when you reach this digital ministry context, it's a little more fuzzy. For example, I have more than a thousand subscriber on my TikTok uh, account. Are they members? Yet yeah, they answering me, the sending message, I'm starting to do pastoral care to through this device. So is it so we're we're walking into a gray zone from what we assume for a long time. And it's difficult because it's always and all of the people who are in congregation right now knows about the statistical analysis. How many, many people on Sunday morning? How many people on your list? That's great. But what is missing is how many people are you, do you have an impact? On people you're reaching out to, um, you have a relationship. Maybe they will not come to the worship service. Maybe they will not give money, but you're there. You're, I hope, have an impact on those people's life. That's not nothing. It's part of the great commissioning in, in Matthew. Jesus did not say create congregation with members and, 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 and a spreadsheet for donors. Preach the gospel. Preach the good news. So this part is also important to be there for those who are looking for. And and for us, I think, is to always keeping our, asking ourselves what's next. How can we reach out to those who are on the fringe, those who do not know that a progressive, uh, inclusive church is possible? So we have started the podcast uh, a few a month ago. We have launched a, a podcast that asks those questions. Uh, for example, do, do you have to go to church to be a good Christian? Is the Bible the word of God? Question a lot of people ask, and then trying to bring many answers so people can have this journey in their mind, maybe contact us, have a conversation, but at least to continue to bring those questions up front so people can talk about it, think about it. Wow. Incredible. And this sense that you you just continue to be responsive, this question always of what's next, where do we go to from here? It's really incredible. Because the online world is, mo well, the online world is not moving rapidly, but the tools are. And I think that could be um, a mistake to fall in love necessarily with a tool and not saying, let's say, Facebook, we're on Facebook and nothing else. Not bad. But the goal is not to nourish a Facebook page. It's to reach out and do ministry. So if Facebook disappeared tomorrow and, well, let's use another tool. So so trying to, to find, okay, what's our the tool these days? We can reach out to people, understanding who are using it, what's our the code. But once again, like a church building, in a way, I see it as a tool, expensive one, but the church building does not do ministry by itself. The brick and mortar are not there. They are used to bring something else. So that's the way I see Zoom, TikTok, Facebook, and, and, and a podcast. They are tools to reach out to bring this message into the world. Wow. Stefan, I think this is just so, this last piece you've said is so important for folks to hear 
that you know the building is sort of similar it is it is a tool and it ministry doesn't just exist because the building exists it is about this relational piece of being in the world of the world connected to communities reaching out to people uh, and really walking alongside them on their journey so I think this is such an important piece that you are articulating and have discovered through your work over the last two and a half years and I hope people will try to realize this and and ask themselves what are the tools we have at our disposal it could be a building it could be a smartphone it could be a web camera there there's so many tools that are offered to us today and because sometimes said oh we don't have the means to do this he said mm, you have the means to do something i'm not saying that everybody should do like our ministry but I believe everybody should try something. And even if it means going outside our zones of comfort, like I said, I, it's not like my 12 years old son who was almost literally born with a smartphone in his hand. For me, it was a learning curve. Said, so, okay, I can do this. I can do that. I will try this. You made many mistakes. But at the same point, said, okay, what, what's the goal here? What's trying to build a better world, bring God's realm uh, uh, on earth? Okay, if if I look a little foolish once in a while, that's not a big, not a big price to, to pay to reach out at this point. So what are our tools at our disposal? What we can do instead of what we cannot do? Amazing. So folks, you've heard it here. This is a great question, I think, to leave you with is what can we do versus what can we not do uh, in our ministry and our work? Uh, Stefan, thank you so, so much. If folks want to be in touch with you, they want to hear the podcast, they want to find you in the digital realm, where could they do that? They can go on a website, idlisaintclair.org. Uh, they can, every everything is there. Uh, the podcast, it's called Question de Croix. Uh, Pasteur Stéphane or Pasteur Stéphane Vermette is on Instagram, on TikTok, but everything is on the webpage and it's fairly easy to get in touch with me. I'm always happy to talk with people, would like to continue this discussion, wherever they are in discussion. I think when you have something, you have to help others, people to reach their potential. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much for your time and energy and for the great work that you're doing uh, in our communities. Uh, it's so important and so valuable. So we see you and we say thank you for all your hard work, Stefan. Thank you very much for this invitation.